All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm really happy to be here uh, bright and early at 8 a.m. Uh, I didn't think anyone was going to join me, so I'm glad I don't feel so lonely. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your day to be here. Um, the session today is really going to look at if you're not the host of a Google Meet, what can you do? What are ways that you can engage with your students or our fellow staff members in a meet when you don't have those host controls? So that's what we're going to talk about today because there's lots of other ways other than just the breakout rooms. So I'm going to try and uh, give you some options today. Um, so if you'd like, because I am recording it, feel free to turn off uh, your uh, microphone and your camera. To Pat, ECEs will be given, from my understanding, ECEs will be given uh, those features. I think they're just rolling it out in waves, um, but I would put in a help desk ticket um, to receive that if you don't have those features already. So as you can see on your screen, I am gonna be using a slide deck just to kind of guide me to keep me on track for the 30 minutes. At the bottom, you're gonna see short URL. Feel free to type that in and that will give you access to the slide deck that we're, uh, I'm gonna be using today. If you're watching the recording of this, pause the video. Um, that link will still be live to you as well. All right, who am I? My name is Catherine Wake. I'm one of the LT consultants. Um, my background is elementary, but thankfully we have the incredible wizardry of Steph Pearson. Do you want to say good morning? Good morning, learners at eight o'clock. We love eight o'clock learners. We're all just we so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Thank you for coming. <laughs> so we have Steph here as well, who's going to bring the perspective of high school as well as her e-learning background. So um, hopefully we'll be able to answer your questions um, if you have them. But of course, we are not alone. We are part of an amazing crew uh, team consisting of Tara Potter and Bill Corcoran as well. So depending on what school you're at, uh, you do have a consultant that's attached to your school. So if you ever have any follow-up questions that aren't answered here today, we have lots of office hours this week that you can drop in. And as well, you can always shoot us an email and we're happy, happy, happy to help. All right, so the first thing that I wanted to do was I kind of wanted to break down some of the language that you may be hearing. Um, I think that this is important because uh, things get lost in translation. Um, and so if we're all on the same page, I think that that's gonna be important. So first of all, when we talk about Google Meet, um, you may be hearing these terms used quite frequently. So the host, when you hear the host, that is the person who owns the Google Calendar event. That is the person who basically has all the power um, to change settings, remove students, um, mute students or fellow colleagues if it's a, a staff meeting and whatnot. So the host is the person who um, owns the calendar event. Host controls are the things that you're allowed to turn on and off as a host that allow different levels of accessibility for the participants in the meet. So once I go through these terms, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna flip back and I'm gonna show you my actual meet screen for a lot of what we're doing today. Um, so I'm gonna show you all of these things, but I just wanted to go over the language. So host controls um, has three different components, quick access, smart uh, screen share, as well as the chat. Those are the three main things that you can change in host controls. Host settings are what you go into to make sure your microphone, your camera, all of those things are working. So the host is the person who owns the calendar meet. Host controls are the three different levels of permissions that they are access that they can allow or deny. Host settings are what you can go in and change uh, just to make sure everything is running smoothly. Google Enterprise. So breakout rooms, polls, Q&A, Google Live Stream, all of those things came because we bought licenses to Google Enterprise. We did not have Google Enterprise until December, the third week in December. So we've been engaging as part of the virtual program as well in elementary. We've been engaging with students, even if we're not the host from September until mid-December without all of these features. Um, so that's where some of these tips and tricks are gonna be coming from because we may not have this moving forward, Google Enterprise, just that part of Google, we would be going back to Google for Education, which is what um, we had previous years. So again, Google Enterprise is what gives us some of these really cool, fancy features. But again, we don't know how long we're gonna have it. Um, maybe it's just part of this pandemic remote virtual learning, who knows? 
Um, but if you hear Google Enterprise, that's what we're talking about. It's what gives us access to some of these fancier tools. Um, the other thing I want to go through is the present now. So um, I know most of us understand uh, this, but some of the help desk tickets that we've been getting and some of the questions, don't forget that there's a present in Google Meet. And then you have your normal Google slide deck, for example, that also has present. So there are two different things. Google Meet has present now, which is what allows your students or your staff to see your screen. Um, but then there's also the present in those Google products itself, but that would not allow others to see that slide deck. That would only be specific to your computer unless you go ahead in Google Meet and share it. On the right-hand side, you can see two logos. So Google Meet did decide to change their, all of their logos to pretty much the same color dynamic with the one on the bottom right. Um, we still have this one on the portal just because we thought that it was easier um, for people to see and identify right now in terms of the accessibility of it. But if you see either of these icons, they both mean Google Meet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through the present now as well as the host settings. So I'm gonna stop presenting this tab. I'm gonna go back to our Meet and I'm gonna present my entire screen. So you may see your face up there. Um, staff, I just wanna make sure you can see my Google Meet screen. I can indeed. Perfect, thanks friend. All right, so when we talk about the host and the host controls, you will know if you are the host if in the bottom left-hand corner you see that blue shield. That will let you know that you are the host. So when we talk about host controls, that's what this is, the quick access, which is essentially the waiting room. Now we know it's not working 100% of the time, um, and some of our recommendations for that would be to take a look in the top right-hand corner and make sure that you do not have any Google extensions um, that would interfere with Google Meet. So if you have Google Meet extensions that you've downloaded up here, we ask that you remove them because it could be interfering with how all of these things work. Um, because they're not created by Google, they're created by outside people and sometimes uh, they don't interact very well, especially when Google updates. So quick access, share their screen and send chat messages. So right now I'm in one Google Meet here um, and I have the ability, if you look in the bottom right hand corner, um, I can turn off your ability to share your screen. So now you should see the present now button grayed out because I've turned off that access. Um, I can turn off chat messages, but I don't want that uh, because uh, in case you have any questions and the quick access, right? So that's, uh, those are the host controls. And then host settings, as I mentioned, are down here where you can go in and actually look at your video and your audio. On the bottom right hand corner, that's the present now. So that's the button that allows your students or participants to see what's on your screen. So don't get it confused with the present in the actual Google product. They're two different uh, presentation modes. All right, I'm gonna go back to the slide deck now. The host has all the power. You can only have one host. There's no ability to put co-hosts to anything. It's the owner of the calendar event. That is the person who has the power, uh, they have the controls, and you cannot have more than one host. So no matter what, because I'm gonna go through some ways that the host can give certain levels of access to in the breakout rooms, but no matter what, they are the ones who can create polls, questions, and breakout rooms. So you can't really transfer the ability for polls, questions, or breakout rooms to anyone but the host in that meeting. But Catherine, I'm so bored, right? You're in this Google Meet, you don't have the host controls, I'm bored. So what can you do in those Google Meets? So I'm gonna go through these kind of four ideas. And at the end of this 30 minutes, what I'd really like is to elicit some um, answers from the group and how you might be using um, these tools to engage with students if you're not the host of the meeting. So these three tools are just one example on how you can engage. So Jamboard, I'm gonna get into a little bit more information um, a little bit later in the slide deck. Google Docs is what I'm gonna go through right now. And then I'm gonna talk about how you can engage with students uh, in HAPRA kind of live. So right now I'm going to go to a Google Doc. So again, 
what I want to sort of highlight today is that you don't need breakout rooms to engage with students in your class. You can engage with students using a bunch of different collaborative tools that you can live engage with them with. So for example, if it's a Google Doc, um, you can always either create a Google Doc and share it with the students in the workspace um, if you are added as a co-teacher, which we can show you how to do that as well. Um, but again, there's different levels of ways that you can engage with your students if you're on the same Google Doc at the same time. So you might be able to pull a small group of students and you may be able to essentially have a conversation with your students on the Google Doc. And how wonderful is it that you're engaging with your students and it's kind of going to be documented for any type of assessment purposes. So one very simple way, as you can see, here's a Google Doc. It was a simple question, what you did over the weekend. It was a student answer. And then I, as the teacher or ECE or EA or resource partner, whatever support role I'm um, giving this small group of students, um, what a great way to spend your weekend. So again, I can actually have a chat with the students um, just typing out my answers. And if the students are also on the document, they can respond right back. So you can have that conversation. Perhaps you have students um, who don't have the ability to, to type out a sentence um, or they're not able to decode the words on the page. You can use something called voice note in read and write, where if this is my student's response, if I highlight it, I can provide a voice note which is essentially a one minute up to one minute recording of my voice that the student can listen to. And what's wonderful is the student can also respond right back using the same tool of voice note. So you could be having a conversation live with students. The camera doesn't need to happen in order for great collaboration to happen between um, a teacher, an educator and their students, right? So again, you can use voice notes to go back and forth with the student live on the Google Doc. And then if you really want to bump it up to like level infinity, you can always use a tool called Screencastify. So Screencastify is wonderful because you can record what's happening on your screen. And you can also put a webcam on the bottom or you can move it around. It doesn't have to be there. So right now I'm recording a screencast for my student. So I'm looking at my student work. My student is actually on the work itself. Um, and I want them to see me, I want them to engage with me. I really want that personal connection to try and develop those relationships, especially during the remote learning. So right now I'm recording my video, I'm talking about their work, then I can stop it. And what it does is it automatically creates a Google Drive link. So by copying it and by pasting it, by copying and pasting that link into that collaborative document, there you go, my student can then engage with me. So those are kind of three different basic levels, and this is just a Google Doc. So you can imagine on a Google slide deck, you can imagine on a Google Draw, um, you can really engage with students, and it doesn't have to be live synchronously on a Google Meet. It can be live, it can be synchronous, but it doesn't have to be on a Google Meet. Um, obviously, you also have the ability to add a comment in Google, Doc, Google Docs um, and some of the other Google products, so um, it's good. So it's a great way to engage with your students um, that doesn't have to be live on air. So if you're comfortable with Google Docs, this might be a really nice place to run some small group things um, and really have that back and forth. And like I said, it documents that back and forth. So when you go to look at those uh, kindergarten reports, or you go to look at those report cards, you actually can see the engagement going back and forth. And for those students who um, I know in grade seven to 12, we hear it a lot where the students don't turn on their camera, they don't feel like they're as engaged live on the meet, this might be a really nice way to access uh, those students and connect with them. So that would be a really uh, great way to use Google Docs. HAPRA, um, yes, you can engage live with students on HAPRA. Again, you would have to have access to the class. So you would have to make sure that you have access to the class in Power Teacher. Um, and then if I go into HAPRA, because it's past eight o'clock, this should work. But if I go into HAPRA and I choose my class that I'd like to engage with, perhaps they are online right now as it loads. 
What you can do is you can go to highlights. So remember, I just clicked the class, I clicked highlights, and now I can actually send a message to the students. So I can actually engage live with students. I can send them a message. I can't really have any back and forth, but I can pause their screens um, to maybe have them read the message. I can get into pieces of work. So you can actually interact with the students using Happer Highlights as well. But again, that's only if you are uh, if you have access to that class. You can use the send message feature to engage with your students um, right then, which is a really nice option. So then as well, um, you can engage in the chat. So as you can probably see, you probably are asking questions in the chat box. And what Steph is doing is she's actually responding to questions in that chat box. And we find it's also really great to actually use the at symbol to respond directly to a student question or to call out a student, to prompt a student. Um, maybe you made a connection to a story that they shared previously um, and you want to have them share it again, right? So you can definitely use this time if you're not the host of the meet to engage in the chat um, and really support that learning and really drive those questions and those deep thinking um, inferences and ideas. Um, again, we did not have these breakout rooms until mid-December. So you do have the ability to pull students into your own Google Meets with host controls, right? So if you do want all those host controls, there's nothing stopping you from creating your own Google Meets um, with small groups of students. Um, so again, you would just, instead of the class email, you would just individually add the student email addresses into the calendar event. Um, I know that I did talk to a principal who had confirmed with the spec ed department. If there's anybody uh, from this department, feel free to chime in. But from my understanding, uh, EAs are allowed to be in breakout rooms with students. Again, always using your professional judgment, right? There's no requirement uh, in any way, shape or form. Same with educator, any level of educator. Um, there's no requirement to be part of breakout rooms. Again, using your professional judgment in all instances. And then of course, there's the breakout rooms. So I know that's what most of you are here to learn about today, which I'm definitely gonna go through, but I just wanted you to know that you have other options to engage with students that don't always involve breakout rooms. All right, breakout rooms. So the most important thing to note is that there is one set of host controls for the whole meeting, but then there's also individual host controls within each breakout room. So if you are moving into a breakout room with a student or a small group of students, the host of the meet would need to go into your breakout room and toggle on the host controls to allow your chat and your share screen ability. Beware that it does set it for all participants in that breakout room. So there's no way for the host to just simply turn it on for one, the educator in that room. They'd have to turn it on for the whole group in that room. So if there is a situation um, that happens in the room, because you don't have the ability to remove the student, you would either have to ask for help in the breakout room, which I'll show you how to do because I'm gonna put you in breakout rooms, um, or you can come back to the main room, let the teacher know what's going on or the host of the meet what's going on, and they can remove the student. Um, again, there's no Q&A polls uh, option for a non-host or breakout rooms. So even though they can turn on your ability to chat and share your screen in the breakout room, you won't be able to do your own polls or your own Q&As in that breakout room. Another reason why you might want to do um, your own Google Meets with students. The host needs to set up rooms and who goes in them. So you, um, if you're not the host, you don't have the ability to change students or to go and you know how we used to go in and grab another set of students once those students I've worked with. You don't have that ability. Only the host can move students from room to room. All right, so breakout rooms, let's try it. So I'm gonna go back to our meeting here. In the top right-hand corner is the activities button. So if you are the host, you'll have the activities button. And what I can do then is I can choose breakout rooms as my option. And as you can see, I have a lovely, wow, I have a lovely group um, of students here with me today. Sorry, that just made me super nervous. My hands just got really cold. Um, so what you can do then, um, down here, and I, we, Lisa and I already spoke, 
But if you have a student who's populated down there, it's only because they're not using their student account or they're logged into multiple places. So then Google's kind of like, what's going on with that student? All that's going to happen is that they'll remain, <clears throat> excuse me, in the main room. So there's no problem if you see that. They just have to remain in the main room. So I'm going to set up breakout rooms. Right now, it's actually defaulting to six. So you can go as low as two in this little window. But what happens is when it gets to breakout room two, um, you don't have to put any names in it. So if you only wanted one breakout room and your main room, you just have to make sure that all names are moved out of break room two, breakout room two. And then you can just have the main and breakout room one. A timer is really great, um, and you can obviously shuffle students into different rooms. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to throw you into a breakout room. It's going to take me a little bit of time, but I'm actually going to go in to the breakout rooms, and I'm actually going to change the host controls so that you can practice or you can see that you can share your screen um, and that you can uh, use the chat box. So I'm going to put you into a room. Again, you don't have to go on camera but I'm just gonna try and show you what that looks like. So now I'm just gonna open rooms. It's gonna prompt you to join the room. And then I'm going to get into those rooms and change it up. So the participants may need to refresh their screen. I find that sort of updates the permission. So if it wasn't working for you, the little curly arrow in the top uh, left would, is a good place to start. Thank you, perfect. So yeah, maybe a refresh um, would kind of resync those settings that happen. Um, so just try that obviously when you're in the group. But again, if you're put in a breakout room um, and Catherine messes up or the educator of the host messes up, you obviously, many of you asked for help. So then that was great. Then I just got that notification, I came into your room and then I can make sure that I turn those on. So make sure you advocate for that. Um, because now you know that those individually have to be put on. So if you never see the host in your breakout meeting, they might not have turned that on for you to have that ability to chat and to share your screen. All right, so that's kind of breakout rooms. Um, what I did wanna get into uh, is Jamboard a little bit. So if you haven't seen Jamboard, it's great. Um, there's two things that we just wanna mention ahead of time is that there's no version history for Jamboard. Um, so you can't really see who does what. Sometimes there's an error message when students are submitting it on Workspace. We're aware of that error and they're working on it. With Jamboard, it is a simple user interface. It does work with Read and Write, the screenshot reader. Uh, caution when allowing students to create their own Jamboards. I'm gonna walk you through that with the last two minutes today. Um, and what's great is that you can create Jamboards during those teachable moments and throw it in the chat for students to engage with you in real time obviously if the chat box is available. And I do have some templates in the slide deck for you to play around with. So I'm gonna go back to our meet. On the bottom right hand side, the three dots, I can actually open a jam. So you have that ability right now to do. I can choose it from my drive or I can start a new whiteboard. What you're gonna see then is a pop-up. So everybody who's in my meeting pops up here meaning that these are the people I'm giving access to. I can give them viewing access or I can toggle it to give them editing access. So maybe it's the math concept that I wanna model. So maybe I'm only giving them view access because I'm the one who's writing out the steps going through that math process. Um, you can also turn link sharing on to anyone at the school board can view if you need to. So again, if you're- student, Catherine, I don't think you're sharing your screen. Oh my goodness. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Steph. I appreciate it. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the slide deck. Here's the Jamboard information. Here are three templates that you have access to. Um, so right now in the bottom right-hand corner, I open a Jamboard, I start a new whiteboard. I have this box that pops up with all the names that are currently in the meet. I'm gonna give them editing access within, and then I'm going to hit send. If you don't have the chat box open, it's not gonna pop up for everyone to be able to access. So think about that first, uh, before you set up your breakout rooms and whatnot, you wanna make sure that you have the chat box open so that people can get in. So if you saw that link pop up, feel free to get into Jamboard and play around with it. 
Again, this can happen live. So maybe the teacher is teaching a concept and maybe uh, there's an ECE who wants to extend the learning with the students, right? So the teacher can be maybe showing a video. Meanwhile, the ECE is engaging with the Jamboard um, on the side with uh, their partners. So again, this is a really nice way to engage live with your students. You might not be the host, uh, have host controls, but you can set up a Jamboard if your partner or the host allows for it. Um, and you can engage with students this way. So again, if you have any questions, it's 8.30, so I'm just aware of everybody's time. Uh, there are some Jamboard templates that are really great. Uh, thanks for coming. This recording will be on our YouTube channel. And Steph, Tara, and I uh, will remain on here for anyone who has any questions. But just as a review, there are lots of ways, if you're not the host, that you can engage with students, um, whether it be through a collaborative document, a Jamboard, sending messages through HAPRA, engaging in that chat box, prompting students, extending the learning. Um, and then as well, pulling your students into your own Google Meets. Um, using your professional judgment, of course, with your host controls. And of course, you can use those breakout rooms. So the host sets up all the breakout rooms, you're put into a breakout room, and the host comes in, gives you the access that you need, and then you can engage with that small group in that, um, using that breakout room tool. So again, we'll stay on for questions. If not, have a lovely day. I can't believe we have so many friends here. I was very nervous, uh, and I hope that there was a little nugget that you took away um, that will help you in your remote or virtual learning. Bye, everybody.